Hi, this is Bob with uh, Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Standing in front of 7575 Cambridge. This is a 3-2, uh, 1,615 square foot uh, by level. It was built in 1980 and it's listed by Open Door Real Estate. Um, just FYI, I can help you with any house that's for sale in the state, whether it's listed by myself or another firm or whether it's a FISBO. Hey, let's go inside and see what we've got. Okay, they've uh, completely reworked this one. Uh, looks like you've got uh, new paint and new flooring and new light fixtures throughout. It is bi-level. One of the things that it does have that you don't see very often is a vaulted ceiling. Most of these are just flat eight foot ceilings. It's got good natural light. It's a pretty decent sized room. And it flows into the uh, dining room, which actually is very large for a bi-level home. You can easily get uh, six or an eight top in there, even with uh, a hutch or a buffet table. Yeah, nice space. Okay, then you can access the kitchen from either the dining room or the living room. There's room here for a little, uh, I don't know, two top or a three top table. You've got uh, brand new stainless steel appliances. And I think we probably have a uh, small pantry here, which helps. New backsplash. Yeah, step out back, you've got a wooden deck. And you have fenced in yard. Looks like maybe there's a church back there. And I won't, will point out that this is on Hag Road, which is a, um, oh, well, probably a collector. It uh, does have some traffic, especially at rush hour. Um, but these are all residential neighborhoods right in this mix. Okay, let's go see what the rest of the house looks like. Coming down the hallway, we've got a coat closet, linen closet, full bath, tub and shower in the uh, hall bathroom here. Got uh, bedroom number three. Good window, um, decent closet. I like the fact that they've got ceiling fans in these. So you have some overhead light. This bedroom too, it's a little larger. Pretty decent size actually. And then we're into the master. Pretty good size master for this size home. Decent closet. And it's got a stand-up shower. It's like new tile work and new uh, kitchen uh, sink cabinet. Okay, so we've got three bedrooms and two full baths upstairs here. Let's go downstairs and see what we've got. All the new continues downstairs. It's uh, flooring, paint, light fixtures. The bottom of the stairs turn to the right. There's your garage. Oh, we've got storage under the stairs. You've got a utility room with your washer and dryer hookups. It looks like they put in a certain amount of new PEX plumbing. And a water softener in your furnace. And your water heater tucked back in the corner there. Okay. Okay, you have a family room. You've got some wainscoting. You have a wood burning fireplace. Pretty decent ceiling height. Nice hearth on that. Then you have this section of the room over here, which could be an office, kid playroom, workout room, whatever you wanted. Um, and it's got a full closet back here as well. Because it's a bi-level, you do get good light in here, which is nice. So this gives you a second uh, gathering space. So you have your living room upstairs, your family room downstairs, plus this multi-purpose area over here. 
So there's some room for the family to spread out. Okay, so we have, uh, let's see, we've got three bedrooms, two full baths, two living areas, uh, all new carpet, flooring, paint, light fixtures, appliances, and the ticket on this is 335. Let's go see what the next one looks like. Okay, we've moved on to 621 Coal Barn. Uh, this is a 1,946 square foot tri-level. It too was built in 1980. It sports uh, three bedrooms, an office, and uh, two and a half baths. Let's go uh, take a look at it. Step inside, you have a small foyer. Pretty narrow, really. Comes right into the living room, which is pretty good size. It's uh, L-shaped into the dining room. They've got a six top. You could put a leaf in there for Thanksgiving dinner if you wanted. There's room there for a hutch or a buffet table. This uh, wraps around into the kitchen. You've got a couple different kinds of appliances. You have some white, some off-white, some stainless steel. Not a ton of counter space or cabinet space. You do have a uh, decent pantry here. And there's room for a two top um, or four top there for breakfast. Um, outside you've got uh, a fenced in backyard. You do have a nice little uh, covered patio here. There's a shed over there. Keep your lawnmower and all those good things. Okay, there's not much light in here and I apologize for that. Um, but come down here into this uh, family room. It does have, uh, looks like a gas log um, fireplace with a brick hearth. We've got uh, newer flooring. Back in the corner here, you come into a good size office. There is no closet in here, but this is a good size office. Or you could use it as a workout room or game room or bumper pool, whatever door over here is going to take you to the garage. Some built-ins. Okay. Show you one other thing down here. Get a storage closet and then back in here you have your mechanicals in your laundry room. You've got a newer water heater, older furnace, washer and dryer, water softener, and then they've got a half bath tucked in back here. Okay, so right off the family room, that's your uh, two and a half, that's your half. Okay, let's go upstairs and see what we've got up here. Okay, we've got um, bedroom number three, halfway decent size. Some of these windows have lost their seals and could probably stand to be replaced. This room's very similar. Let's see what I mean about those windows. You've got a uh, full bath here. I've got one of these, um, oh, where you can close the door and turn the shower into a bathtub. Um, that could be replaced, and FYI. I got a good list of contractors that uh, do very reliable, uh, cost-effective work uh, for myself and for my clients and I'm always glad to share those names and you know the key there is that if you see a house you like but it's not quite right well we can have it uh, uh, set up so that the work is done by these contractors before you even move in and then that way when you move in you've got the house that you want so keep that in mind like I said they're reliable cost-effective they do good work Okay, we're into the uh, master. It's big enough. Um, you can get a chest of drawers, a couple nightstands, and a king size bed in here. And it does have a, uh, its own private bath, single vanity, stand up shower, tiled. Okay. So uh, we've got this uh, tri level that's uh, got a lot of potential. Um, the ticket on it is 359. Okay, we're in front of 7612 Home Drive. This one is listed by True Blood Real Estate, and you know the drill. 
Uh, this one was built in 1976. It's 1,830 square feet over an 858 square foot finished basement. It's got four bedrooms, two and a half baths. It is a classic two-story. It's got a pretty charming uh, family room. It's not real large, but uh, it's got a real nice uh, brick fireplace with a wood stove insert that would uh, keep you toasty in the wintertime. Let's go check it out. Step inside and uh, you've got a small foyer here with the stairway up and then to your left is uh, your living room. It's got a uh, well, halfway decent size. It's got a bow window which is attractive. That's newer. L shapes into your dining room which uh, probably good for a six top maybe squeeze in an eight top for Thanksgiving dinner and whatnot. Pass through to the kitchen. Okay, kitchen has uh, Formica countertops. It does have a gas uh, range top, which is nice. Uh, new stainless steel refrigerator. Appliances are somewhat a mix. We've got black hood fan, white dishwasher, the old double oven here. There's a double oven. Not really space in here for a table. So you're using your dining room um, for your family dining during the week. Okay, over here we have, uh, let's see, garage door is here. You have a half bath tucked in back here. A linen closet, or it could be a pantry for your kitchen. And then you're into this family room. Again, it's not very large, but uh, does it have nice hardwood floors, does have the brick fireplace and the wood burning uh, wood stove insert. This takes you out to your uh, patio. You do have a fenced in backyard all the way around. You do have this uh, above ground pool and deck. And then out back you have a storage shed. This is on 116th Street. This is a middle of the day traffic. This is one of the um, two primary east-west passages through the town of Fishers. So there is some uh, road noise here that you would have, and especially at rush hour time. Okay, let's see what the rest of the house has to offer. Go up the stairs here. This house has not had a lot of recent upgrades. Carpet is uh, showing some age. Bedroom number four, some built-ins. Bedroom number three, decent enough size. Some of these uh, windows look like they've lost their seals. By the way, I'm an ex-home inspector, among other hats that I've worn and uh, also an ex-contractor so I can help you with uh, figuring out what needs to be done or what could be done. Okay, we have another bedroom here. This one's larger. Decent sized closet. Uh, we've got the tub and shower in this uh, single vanity bathroom that's shared by the three bedrooms. And then we're into the master. Decent enough size. Carpet in here is a little newer. You got a makeup counter, walk-in closet, bathroom with a single vanity, and tub and shower. Okay, let's go downstairs and uh, see what the basement has to offer. Uh, this looks like it was recently painted and carpeted. Got a good size room here for you know, movies or games or whatever you want. Um, another alcove over here that you could put a uh, workout room or kids playroom or an office. Storage under the stairs. And then hey, everybody's gotta have a utility room. You've got a laundry sink, washer and dryer hookups, your water heater and an older furnace. 
Okay, this one's been on the market about 30 days, a little bit more. I imagine most of the feedback is that uh, it needs some upgrades to, to make most people happy. On the other side of the coin is you have about 2,700 square feet of uh, finished living space here to work with, which um, is not always the easiest to find. Four bedrooms, two and a half baths. We're gonna go take a look at the uh, most expensive and cheapest homes sold in this uh, very, very popular uh, Sunbless Farms uh, neighborhood here in just a second. Uh, first, I wanted to touch base. Uh, maybe you're sitting there thinking, do you buy first or do you sell first? And that's a tough question for a lot of people and especially in this market. Um, I've helped a lot of people work through the pros and cons of each of those uh, two strategies. And then, uh, hey, you can be the judge for yourself which works best for you. And by the way, we offer a free room by room analysis. This gives you um, or us an opportunity to walk through the house uh, together. We can look at it. We can talk about the things that could um, make you money and the things that could save you money. Because I'm sure people have said, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. Well, not always. OK, and we're glad to talk through those things to help you make up your mind so that uh, uh, we can help you get your home sold for the uh, best price in the quickest fashion and with the least hassle. We're on Apple Tree and pulling up on the uh, cheapest home sale in the past 12 months here in this very popular Sunblast Farms subdivision. Well, they're doing some work there, and in just a second, I'm going to tell you why. Um, this home is a 2-2, it's 1,395 square feet, and it was built in 1981. It was an estate sale. It had a newer roof, HVAC, and windows, but uh, they mentioned that it could benefit from some upgrading. And uh, when you check out that price, you see why. Uh, $257,500. Uh, so there's a lot of potential there, but uh, obviously it needed some work, and that's why it went off at the price that it did. Okay, let's go on down and check out the most expensive home sale in the last 12 months. Okay, we're at 12455 Hayden Court in Fishers and in Sunbless Farms. This was the most expensive sale during the last 12 months. It's a five bedroom, three and a half bath. They say it's no cookie cutter. It's situated at the end of this cozy cul-de-sac. It's got an updated kitchen with two islands. It had new stainless steel appliances, flooring, and the list goes on and on. Um, you've got almost 2,900 square feet total. You got 2,326 upstairs and 637 in a finished basement. This one was uh, built in 1988, which was later in the subdivision's uh, development, and it went off at $450,000. The area around Sunbless Farms has so much to offer. Um, I mean, it's just ideally situated. You're about five minutes to both uh, State Road 37 and the Interstate I-69. From there, that'll take you right down to the Beltway, which is 465, and from there you can go anywhere in the metro area. Because of this great location and the population in the area, there are plenty of jobs. Along uh, 37, there is manufacturing and distribution centers. Along 69, there's more distribution centers. Where the two come together, uh, you've got a lot of financial services. You have uh, Forum uh, Credit Union headquarters. You have Freedom Mortgage. You have the student loan servicers. A little further south, you have, uh, along the Beltway, you have Roche Diagnostics, which is a Fortune 500 company. And then you have all the educational opportunities in hospital and medical and healthcare type jobs scattered within a half hour of um, Sunbless Farms. Then that's not to mention just all the other services uh, that, or service industry jobs that there are in the area. Okay, let's talk schools. The kids here go to Fishers Elementary and to Riverside uh, Intermediate and uh, Junior High School and Fishers High School. They are all rated A by niche.com. They are part of the Hamilton Southeastern School System, which is ranked number eight in the state out of 290 public school systems. So it's like a top three percenter. Um, you also have some private school opportunities. Your Catholic schools are A rated or A plus rated even at the high school level, but they are a little further away. Uh, Heritage Christian, which is grades K through 12 and which is on the Beltway, is rated, um, or yeah, is rated A as well. And then there's a, a lot of other um, non-denominational and other private schools in the area for the uh, K through eight grades. With 
27,000 kids in Fishers, Indiana, there are plenty of opportunities for kids, whether you're talking about the parks, or you're talking the pools, or you're just talking all the things like gymboree's and rock climbing and all of that type of thing. Uh, plenty of entertainment options for people of all ages, but today we're gonna concentrate on a few. We're gonna take a tour of three music venues, um, st starting with the event center, uh, which will be done at the end of the year. We'll see 8,500 people. We'll have music and comedy and theater. Then we're gonna go to the Nickel Plate Amphitheater, seat 6,000 for a slate of music in the summertime. We'll pop up to Counter Prairie, a regional tourist attraction, seats over 8,000 people for its uh, Symphony on the Prairie. Um, summer, there's a dozen uh, different uh, uh, performances, which is a great time. And then we're gonna sneak into Ruoff Music Center, which, um, hey, is the gym in Indiana. Hey, in 2018, it sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And I'm gonna give you an inside tip on how you can get home from there in five minutes. We're gonna continue our tour. Uh, we're gonna go look at some golf courses. River Glen's just a couple blocks away here from Sunblast. Uh, we're gonna uh, go over by Ironwood Golf Club and check it out. And then we're gonna stick our head in the door at Top Golf, which is always a great time, whether you're a golfer or not. And then uh, we're gonna finish up our tour with uh, going through some shopping centers and at uh, Hamilton Town Center and uh, The Yard, both of which are outdoor walkable malls. They have uh, great shops and they have some really great restaurants. And I'm gonna share, you, share with you some of my favorite restaurants at both places. And then if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna share a market update and give you a strategy that uh, you can make work for yourself in this market. Hey, if you'd like to learn more about real estate and fishers or the greater Indianapolis area, or maybe you just want to walk through a home that you've seen advertised, text me or book a call. Now, let's jump in the Tahoe and let's go take a look. If you're uh, thinking about moving to the uh, Fishers area or the greater Indianapolis, uh, you'll be sure to want to pick up our relocation guide. Uh, my staff and I have put together the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy in the comments section below. We're going to start our tour of the top music venues in the local area with uh, the event center and then we'll uh, cruise by uh, and walk around Nickel Plate Amphitheater. Uh, we'll stop in at Connor Prairie, see what we can see this time of year. And then we'll uh, sneak into Ruoff and uh, I'll share with you just how big a, a festival that is uh, all summer long. I'm sitting outside the what will be the new Fishers Events Center. This is slated to open in December of 2024. It is a massive project. It's uh, $170 million and will anchor a $550 million project that oh, will encompass this entire area with shops and restaurants and other fun things to do. This will be home to the Indy Fuel, which is a minor league hockey team uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks. And it'll they'll also host other sporting events uh, including the uh, Fisher's Freight, which will be an indoor football league team that will open, I believe, in 2025. Um, it will also host uh, music and comedy and theater and seat anywhere from 6,500 to 8,500 people. And this is all within walking distance of the yard. Yeah, Nickel Plate Amphitheater in Fisher's, Indiana. This uh, facility seats 6,000 people, lawn style seating. They have a full slate of different kinds of music throughout the summertime and fall, uh, something for everybody. One of the nice things is you can eat at one of the local uh, restaurants, come watch the show, enjoy it, and then go finish the night off at a local pub. Hey, this is a ticket you might wanna score. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year round. They have a variety of activities, uh, including hot air balloons and, uh, oh, the, what is this, uh, 150 or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's February and we're not going to get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime, they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie. And the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, 
2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage and hey it's a good time it really is i know people that have like tickets for the whole season all 12 nights i usually make it out once maybe twice at the most but uh, hey i have a busy summer so but hey it is a good time okay let's uh, finish our music tour with uh, the cream de la cream uh, let's go look at ruoff music center this is ruoff music center now it's february and things are buttoned up really tight uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here but at any rate I'll flash you some photos you've got to you've got to think about this this seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music all-star lineup you can get a season pass even and uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world in fact in 2018 Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, they're in the top five. I mean, just crazy. Now, if you get the uh, Premier or the Legends Pass, uh, parking passes, you can pull right up to the turnstiles, you can tailgate, you can walk right in. And then uh, at the end of the night, you don't have to sneak out early. You can stay till the very end, you catch the encore, you walk out, it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot and you're another, what, two, three, five minutes home? Hey, it's a great time. Next up on our tour, uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, what you can do with golf uh, here in Fishers, Indiana. We're gonna look at uh, River Glen Country Club, which is just a couple blocks away, and then Ironwood Golf Club, and then, hey, we're gonna stop in at Top Golf. and whether you're a golfer or not, that's just a lot of fun. Hey, let's talk golf. Fishers has been ranked by one golf magazine or another as the number two most underrated golf community in the entire United States. So I asked uh, my stepson, Seve, and one of his former college teammates, which were the best golf courses in Fishers? And they both independently came up with the same two names, River Glen and Ironwood. We're gonna take a tour of both of them uh, in just a second here. It's a uh, breezy day in February, and uh, while it's pretty comfortable, the course is closed because it's wet right now and they're trying to get it into shape. But uh, this course is really pretty. They call it uh, nature's course. It sits along the White River and um, it is a really delightful course to play. I'm gonna walk around here and see what we can see. Got 18 holes here plus a driving range. They have uh, men's, women's, and junior leagues. They also have a very nice large pool and pool memberships. Uh, they also have a lot of event space here. They do banquets. In fact, uh, years ago when I ran a mortgage company, we used to do our uh, celebration uh, breakfast meetings here. Very nice. Uh, there's three memberships. There's a regular, a junior, and a family fun, which includes the pool. But just standing here, you can really see just how pretty this course is. Nice big deck up there. Just Look out over all of this. Really beautiful. River Glen Country Club. Okay, I'm at Ironwood Golf Club in uh, Fishers, Indiana. And it is the end of February. And look at that parking lot. It is full of golfers out playing. How cool. They've got a driving range. Nice. Lots of woods, water. And then over here, uh, they've got 27 hole course. Wines all over the place, very pretty, good course to play on, well maintained. They uh, have a variety of leagues, uh, a full junior program with leagues, camps uh, for kids all the way from five and up. They've got uh, the driving range and lessons, and they have memberships for uh, singles, family, junior, senior, and young professionals, so take your pick. And then up there at the clubhouse, they also have some banquet facilities. This is uh, a course that if you move to Fishers, Indiana, you just might want to play. While we're talking golf, let's talk Top Golf. Uh, this is a 
Tuesday afternoon in February and the parking lot still has a good number of cars, but this will fill up and uh, be crazy about half the time. Inside, they've got a hundred climate controlled bays. And this is more like going bowling than it is playing golf. I mean, you don't have to have your own clubs. It's like uh, when you go to the bowling alley and yeah, there's some people that walk in with all the official gear and they've got their own ball and bag and all that and shoes. But, uh, you know, the rest of us go in there, pick a ball out, stumble to the uh, lane and uh, throw it down there. Well, here at Top Golf, um, it's kind of the same. You don't have to have your own clubs. Uh, there's no cost to rent them. Um, they have all sorts of events and you can see the base here from the outside and then uh, out there into a hitting area. The uh, balls are uh, high tech and they score for you. They do all kinds of events and games. And uh, one of the neat things is there's like a bar and a restaurant. There's 200 TV scattered throughout. And uh, there's even uh, fire pits up on top of the uh, rooftop terrace. So this is great for uh, old birthday parties and uh, other kinds of get togethers. Uh, companies uh, do outings here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know, you get to hit a bucket of balls and if you don't want to hit the whole bucket, somebody else will hit yours and uh, you can sit down and drink. Hey, it's a good time one way or another. Okay, we're uh, getting there with our uh, tour of all the area attractions. We're gonna go to uh, next uh, Hamilton Town Center and then the yard. Both are open air malls uh, built in the last 10 years. They have just a ton to offer in the way of shopping and also with great restaurants. And I'm gonna share uh, some of my favorites uh, at both places here in just a minute through here it's got a, just a really wide variety of shops and really good restaurants and in the areas surrounding uh, as well so tons and tons of uh, retail shops and uh, food places and what have you You've got uh, livery here, which is, oh, I'd call upscale Mexican. It's a Cunningham property and all of their restaurants are great. You've got Ford's Garage, which has uh, oh, really good burgers. And it's kind of interesting, fun place, the, the way some of their marketing and, and just little things like uh, napkins and, oh, different things that they do inside that really are kind of interesting make it kind of fun you have a total wine for all of your uh, beer and wine needs you can't find it there I'm not sure you can find it anywhere over here you got DSW and Ben's Warehouse and oh, just all sorts of different places going to take a ride down this little street very walkable got an old navy here got Lita Express K Jewelers Victoria's Secret Soma it's a fun place to shop shopping than I can do through 21 finish line American Eagle over here five guys yes the three dog bakery my wife spends too much money there On the corner here we have uh, pies and pints pretty good pizza real good salads over here is Stone Creek another Cunningham property one of my more favorite restaurants and right in front of us is Dick's Sporting Goods so just all kinds of uh, opportunity here to satisfy your retail and dining pleasure 
big movie theater to go along with it. We're getting ready to head into the yard and I wanted to stop just on the outskirts here. This is Portillo's. And uh, I'm not a big fast food guy, but this is a place I make exceptions for. When I was in high school uh, in Chicagoland, these were little hot dog carts on the corner. And we would go there at the end of the night and get a Chicago dog or an Italian sa uh, sausage sandwich or their big beef. And uh, boy, I think they're the best in the world. I like my uh, big beef with sweet peppers and I like it dipped. Try it. We're coming into the yard, which is a recent development, maybe in the last five years. Uh, lots of restaurants, uh, other shops as well. Uh, this is the Hamilton uh, County Tavern and Kitchen. It is a Hughes Culinary property. They are fabulous, all of them. Make a little right here on the cobblestone street. You've got uh, some upscale apartments up above, some different uh, types of shops like uh, Oh, uh, Hot Sauna and Athletic Annex. Over here you have Rise, which is an excellent uh, breakfast place. You have Kincaid's Meat Market, which uh, goes back for many, many decades. Some salons, you've got a winery, you've got Slapfish, you've got a Mexican cantina here on the corner. And right here you have one of my very favorites, which is San Giovese. It's one of the better Italian places around. They have good lasagna. They have maybe the best chicken parm in the entire city. Uh, over here you have Sun King Brewery. Uh, everybody loves their uh, cream ale. You've got the Test Kitchen. And then over here we have the Havana Cigar Lounge, if you're into that and then the 1933 Lounge and the 101 Beer Pub. And there's a few others too. Um, the 1933 Lounge is interesting. It's another Hughes culinary uh, property. And you can notice up there on the sign, it says 1933 Lounge by St. Elmo. Well, St. Elmo is uh, the most famous steakhouse in the city. It opened in 1902. People from all over the country uh, eat there when they're in town. All the, find all the celebrities and sportscasters and all of that. Um, it was named because uh, during the prohibition years, there was a speakeasy above St. Elmo's. And uh, so this property right here, the 1933 lounge, is modeled after the uh, a speakeasy. My wife and I ate there the other night for Valentine's Day. It was great. They have to die for shrimp cocktail, uh, prime steaks, and I had a slab of prime rib that was just fabulous. Um, hey, it's something you might want to check out. Back at the beginning of this video, I promised I'd share a current market update with you. I will not disappoint. So I'm going to share uh, what's been going on most recently in the last couple of weeks here in the market and how you can take advantage of the trends. Listen up now. January housing numbers are in and drum roll. Lower mortgage rates have caused buyers and sellers both to jump into the market. But so, demand still exceeds available inventory, which means for buyers, they need to be prepared. They need to be pre-approved. They need to know what they want and they need to be ready to pull the trigger when they do find the right house. But so for sellers, tighter inventory has made prices sticky, making it a great time to be a seller. However, I understand if you're sitting on a 3% mortgage and are hesitant to buy at 6%. But if that's the case, then maybe you need to look at new construction. Most people do not realize that new construction homes does not necessarily mean nine months. Most builders have what they call quick move in homes. They may be ready today or anytime in the next 30, 60, 90 days. And I'm seeing 30 year fixed rate mortgages from the builders of like 4.99 and five and a quarter percent. Those are good. No, those are great. And for more info on those opportunities, check out these videos. If you'd like to learn more about what's going on in the greater Indianapolis real estate market, 
Uh, be sure to tune in every Tuesday. We do a tour of new construction homes that are for sale, uh, showcase the builders and their communities. On Thursday, we tour existing homes for sale and their neighborhoods. And then on Saturday, we do a segment uh, about living in Indiana, what it's all about. So, hey, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next one. Check it out right now.